Hello.
I'm gonna pull my phone somewhere I can see it a lot easier. All right. Got my drink. Okay, just to kind of give you a quick rundown of the menu. You got your statuses up here. You got your skills and abilities down here. Item, character, skills, quest modes which can be a resting or attack mode which is normal mode resting basically it's like resting in Skyrim but enemies can actually attack you during that uh, then you got your uh, skip turn or game menu so with everything uh, up here it'll let you know if you're hungry thirsty what mood you're in morale is actually a stat which is actually really fucking cool if you keep your character happy with, you know, like drinking, eating their favorite, like eating good food, like sleeping, making sure they're well taken care of, they get a bo bonus, and uh, they get, uh, take a uh, basically, you can see right here what they get from it. Uh, fresh is basically if you rest in it, and you basically get a bonus for that too. So when you start your journey, wherever you're going, it makes it amazing. No, it makes it better for you. Here are your character stats. You basically have your character, your skills, which you should, you know, obviously do other things. All of the <laughs> the actual stats, which is a little intense, but you kind of get the idea when you're actually looking at each what one of each of them do. Then you have your health, which basically is your full health. I don't mean just like your HP bar, which actually all of these do affect your HP bar. Depending on uh, what exactly they do is depending on what type they are. For example, hunger, like hunger, uh, thirst, intoxication, pain, immunity. Hunger and thirst can make your uh, stamina go down or your health go down. Thirst can do the same thing. Intoxication can make you get status effects and uh, can really like basically mess up your motor skills. Basically, you can't control your character almost anymore. Pain can uh, also make you uh, fumble when you attack, or like you say, you try to move and your character kind of st stuns because of their pain. Immunity is, uh, I don't know what, uh, I, I, I haven't seen anything about that yet. Morale and sanity is uh, basically exactly what they say, fighting spirit and your character's ability to uh, uh, handle situations. They have all of these, which you can manage, apply healing salve, apply splint, perform surgery, apply leeches. Depending on what kind of status effect you have on which body part, what exactly it does, it all, that, all the, that all depends. So, uh, there's a lot going on here. Then you have traits, which each unit killed, receive a 15 bonus from. Duh. Basically you can get traits, they haven't really added anything more than that, but basically it kind of acts character traits, which changes up your gameplay style. And each frequent character has a history of them, which is pretty fucking cool. They didn't need to do that, but it kind of gives you some backgrounds of uh, just interesting character reactions. You got your uh, skills, which, like I said, there's a shit ton. These are just, uh, apparently, there's going to be more tiers of them. This is just tier one. Um, I guess there's going to be more tiers, as in, like, there's going to be more skills later down the level for each one. We have all these weapon skills. Then you have utility skills, which apparently do other stuff like alchemy, sabotage, survival, which I'm guessing are going to be a lot more interesting. Then you got your magic. Which I know you're more fond of, which is pyromancy, electromancy, venomancy. I, I didn't even see that one. Cryomancy, geometry, astromancy. Ooh, ooh. Oh, chronomancy. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. Oh, dude, that's fucking hype for that. Uh, psychomancy, arcanist. I'd probably go astro and chrono and maybe do, uh, I don't know, actually. But uh, that makes for some interesting builds. I haven't got any uh, any skills yet.
for magic, but uh, right now I have a uh, dual arm, dual wielding swords, which I can't really do uh, anything for basic for that yet. I could get shield skills, which uh, looks like they will do a lot of things too for uh, defense if you want to go tanky. Doesn't look like there's any book weapons though, which maybe they'll add them later since books are just uh, items for learning skills. But, uh, let's see. Hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. But at the same time, it's really hella interesting. So, let's go back to the inventory. This right here is the map. Apparently, this is or this is pre-generated, uh, and I guess all of these question marks are point of interest, which make them interest for uh, going. So, here is where I save the merchant from being uh, killed. But there is a lot of other places that uh, it looks like. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't know why there's so many hard areas though, but uh, I don't know if that's just corresponding to my level or corresponding to how I play. But uh makes it interesting. Um, pretty much, uh, I don't know what time it is. It's 11 right now. At in the morning. So I could pretty much go get everything ready and figure out how I'm going to handle everything. I don't think I'm going to take any contracts. I think we're going to explore for now and see what I can do from there. Yoink. You pretty much want to explore everything, that would be fair. Every NPC is pretty chatty. Um, to save the game, you have to uh, sleep at specific areas. There are bandits force around here, swarming with them. There's a track to Bram, not from, from here. It's just suffering them We've been suffering them too until the metro ship can hunt them down, so now the scout just know to stay away from Osprek. Okay. on the magic for the past year. So that basically tells you what's going on. Uh, you can buy food from here as well. Oh, uh, it's not my house. It's the inn. You are a mercenary. You play as a mercenary. Which means that you are literally living uh, off of uh, what they have. How much is it? Damn, that's expensive. But that does have four meals. Which basically means it saves space. So I'll probably keep these first and have those later. I mean, it's good to be prepared, although I don't need that much water. Uh, so weirdly, alcohol is very, very... I mean, uh, so by the way, sorry. These are uses for items. How many times you can use them, so sometimes it's better to get items that have stacks rather than that. Um, It's good to uh, have alcohol, which just sounds weird, but it keeps up morale, which you kind of need for certain situations. For example, if your character becomes uh, extremely in pain, the alcohol can help numb the pain and help uh, make them survive. Let's check my character's uh, morale, thirst, hunger. It's actually... Alright, there we go, my 
characters all taken care of. Um, I believe there's a well out there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a Resident Evil storage system, which makes it pretty hella cool. I've always been a fan of Resident Evil Star System, even though I don't really care for Resident Evil. Just because it makes you have to be creative of how you store stuff. Which, you know, how I'm big about. I'm not going to take any contracts just yet. All these merchants uh, sell different things. But you can get like, oh, we can actually get skills from here. I might buy a shield since I can't really do a well with anything. And I have the money for it. So it might be better to take this and start learning those skills. But I can also start learning fire magic as well, which, uh, as much as I would love to le uh, learn these, I, I, I still can't use the base fire magic, so I couldn't even use these yet. That I could use though. How much is it? Jesus, that's expensive. Some of these items are super hell expensive, but at the same time, you gotta realize that's uh, that's teaching you all the skills. Fill it. Oh, there you go. Clear. I'm still learning a lot of this game too. Still don't know what that place. doesn't give any protection, but it does give an ability for fire magic, so, but not really helpful since I don't use any yet. Well, that's ex that's expensive, but that is some good-ass armor. Uh, let's actually uh, see if we can... Uh, armor up just a tad. What's kind of interesting is uh, the fact that uh, not that all armor covers everything. You start to have weaknesses which enemies can exploit in that kind of sense. This is just all around better besides for frost resistant. It wouldn't be worth it. Oh, this that brings up a counter chance. That's actually good for my playstyle. I will get it. Let's see. I don't think I'm gonna upgrade anything from here. It's always good to uh, rummage through things. The 
check the other shops because I haven't really looked around that much. I just went through the first quest because I was broke. You can buy stuff from here. A healing stuff. That's pretty cool. The open shield. Let's go with a fish shield. And then I'll sell this. Let's go around town and see what else people other people have. I think we just rummage through everything. <laughs> Let's go to a point of interest. Let's go over here. It's one, two, three, four, five. Five down, or five right, one down. Which, weirdly enough, I always kind of like this map system where you kind of have to figure out where you're at. Just because, uh... Oh, let me, uh... Actually apply some of my skills. That's pretty cool. Oh shit, fucking wolves.
goddamn. So, uh, you can see it's, uh, pretty, uh, intense. Uh, shit kind of just... Sometimes you just fucking die. But, uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, since I don't really do much besides look around town, I'm gonna skip getting that shield and just head out. Oh, and also, let me eat. Oh yeah, by the way, you, you can get bloated. Oh, I should fill my water before I leave. So contracts are the main way you make money, which are uh, the main quest in a sense too as well. They're gonna have side quests in the future, which is pretty cool. But uh, a lot of times, basically, like the game says, you kind of want to avoid uh, major fights. You want to fight one on one, uh, take down the enemy one at a time. Oh, uh, by the way, this skill, the text traps, uh, is just like D&D, &D, where you uh, use that to see if there's any traps around you. You think you're not going to use it, but then you end up checking every room after you get hit by a couple traps and you realize, man, it's really fucking over my inventory. A lot of times roads are safe. There's some occasional where there's a uh, you might get attacked by bandits or something like that, but uh it's not too bad. This is three out of five. Oh shit. Ooh, he is armored well. Let's uh let me go ahead and skip that, and, uh... Let's, is there anything else I can learn? Just, uh, oh, let me go ahead and go. I guess I'll, uh, get on rush. Like I said, this game is a real unforgiving. I should have saw by his armor that I'd be Yep, that I would die. You gotta be very uh, aware. <laughs> Since, uh, <laughs> going east isn't working out for me, maybe I should try to go south instead. I mean, I've never been past there before. Let's see. 
One, two, three, four. Going down four. I guess this game is uh, really unforgiving. <laughs> and with not having a lot of skills, I kind of just have to level it. You know, I want to try something. Let's see what oh, he has different things. Oh, actually. there's different things that they stock with when you uh, start the game up. Okay. When I sell that, it doesn't sell for anything nearly as much. But that's good, because I, uh, I do use, or I do have an off bow as one of my weapons. Honestly, that, weirdly enough, you kind of need that skill for uh, archery. A lot of times I want to avoid forests, forest because uh, of wild animals like bears and shit. So see when you uh, get bit or cut, you get, start getting bleeding damage. So you immediately want to take care of that. Boom, problem solved. Although if you see right here, your health does uh, I think I, uh... <laughs> Wasted all my arrows. Oopsie, that's fine. Ugh. 
Let's cut power. Getting pelts is uh, pretty good too for selling stuff, but uh, so there's supposed to be something here. Because we went from this forest plane to this plane of interest. Up oh, bandit camp. Not very much for reward. But, oh, let's go check over here. Forty-five gold, which is pretty decent. Stardust, which sells for a pretty penny. Not much else here. But here's the thing: with these kind of camps, this is a very, very good thing. Because right here, saved, or at least it should save. We'll see when I die. So from here, I could head back to town. go east twice over here. Oh, east twice over here. Actually, I should sleep until day. And that would be a horrible idea to, uh... Just uh, normal bandit peasants, I can take care of them. 
Let's see. thing about making this sense is getting all your skills back and not Oh shit, now we're gonna go. Boom. And he's dead. Speaking of which, it's always best to check here to see what's going on. Bit hungry? Of course I am. Um And my morale is pretty good. Take this strength a little bit. Take this to uh and so this is what I'm talking about when I'm resting. Boom. Sobered up. I'm full, I'm taken care of. I believe second part of the forest, so the next area should... Let me see what else is over there. I'm really curious about the caravan system. I'm always a big fan of parties. I'm kind of curious if you can customize them like your character, or if they're pre-built and they, uh... advance further? All right. Guess I have to discover what's over here. It's a lot of rocks. Bushes. Oh, another bandit camp. Let's uh... Boom, back up to health. Let's uh, slay some motherfuckers. Weirdly, humans are like the easiest to kill. Secured. Let's take a lock. These things have a real hankin' for stardust. Man. I can't tell if, uh... Looks like a quick nap. Game saved. Kind of sucky thing about it is, uh, oof, getting hungry. But uh, that bar made was right, there's a lot of bandits. 
but you can see right here, optimism. When you have, or when you're in a good morale, it gives you benefits. When you're bad morale, it kind of gives you negative, so you kind of have to take care of your happiness too. So you kind of see the game's pretty basic. You probably get a lot more skills later on. But at the same time, there's so many subsystems going on that there's so much micromanaging to make your character feel, or basically make your character optimal. Which makes it interesting, because I've always been a big fan of pepper or preparation in RPGs. Another bandit camp? God dang it. Bring another fucker. And. You do. <laughs> Critical hit, god damn. Let me guess, more coins in Stardust? Oh, what the fuck is this? A golden brooch. Noise. I mean, still not anything too crazy. But, who am I to complain? <sighs> this is really good. I could technically go to Manshire. If I, uh, try to avoid this. I can uh, probably make it and see what's in that town. Three, right? Corner. Just hope I avoid uh, some major bandits. So, from what I heard, early access is about 10 hours long to do to make pretty much everything in early access. Everything is still randomly generated if you want to play through it again and try different builds and shit like that. But they pretty much say, stated to experience everything the game has to offer. It's pretty much the. Basically, this has to offer. Yeah, that. <laughs> 10 hours. Let's keep going. Oh my god, these fields are pretty empty though. And it is getting pretty late. Experience don't even know. Damn, that's a lot of experience. Mm. Here we go. I 
there might actually be some interesting stuff in here if it's a short soldier. Grand Magistrate. all those. I already have all those. Wait, I don't know actually. I think so. That's an interesting in system where you can rent rooms for about a week or so. But, uh, I shall leave this for right now. This kind of gives you the like, basic idea of how the game plays. And see if there's really anything more I can do this time. Oops. Yep. Handles a stick like it's got happies. Well, who knows with all the strange garages you park in? Hello, Dr. Venture. Miss Quinn. Oh, like Miss Bollocks, Busta. If she won't take my name, maybe she'll take a smack in her smart mouth. Try me. Mom, are you and Horace quarreling again? <sighs> no, Tara. Ah, hello, sunshine. Got your nose. <laughs> hello! Take the turner downstairs, would you? Go with the nice Chinaman Toradol. Ahem. <clears throat> Where do we, uh... Hey, uh -huh. Oh, you pretty thing. Just a little further, and we'll reach the lost city of gold, Sabu. Save me! Oh, save me, Doctor! Adventure. Dr. Quinn, I presume? Hello, round of ice. This time, I get to save you from the savages. Uh, oh, oh, Dr. Quinn, I presume. Gently, I sucked the poison out, but you were completely dehydrated. What were you thinking, running about in the jungle? 
What is this? Polyester? Humidity is no excuse for wrinkles, Rusty. Pity your father also didn't teach you not to steal fertility idols from irritable headhunters. Oh, that! <laughs> I've, I've been researching alternative cures for impotence. Oh, not for me, of course. Have you not tried Viagra? It gives me... My customers headaches, nausea, dyspepsia, and or diarrhea. But enough shop talk. Have you been? What are you doing way out here in the middle of nowhere? Oh, you know, curing cancer. Ah. Well, I'm trying anyway. There have been a number of uh, obstacles. Mother, is your friend all right? Yes, my darlings. Come and meet Dr. Ben. Caught that son of a bitch who's been sniffing around the campsite. Big mofo, too. Ew! Oh, <laughs> Rusty, this is Ginny, my bodyguard and right hand man, as it were. Oh, hello. I'm Dr. Ginny. Ginny's a yank, just like you. Not like him. Uh, uh, well, really should be getting... Oh, my God! I'll just carry them. Oh, poo. Are you sure you can't stay just a while longer, Rusty? Steady yes, as go. Remind me of my boys. Please, 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 please. Really oh, excited please, about everything, please. too. How did that happen? Well, check this out. Hey, how's it going? You may not know this about me, but I'm actually a huge fan of animation. So while I was watching the new show, Duncanville, it got me thinking, what goes into making a dope animated show like that? I mean, how do we get from script to screen? Well, luckily, I have a Duncanville animator right here. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Good, Ify. Oh, why don't you tell these fine people who you are and what you do for Duncanville? Oh, I'm Frank Marino, and I'm the supervising director on Duncanville. Check your side mirror, check your rear view mirror, check the back seat for murderers. Fine, I'll go. Good luck, Duncan. All right, so this show has, like, an amazing cat. What, what is your name? Wesley. What? Wesley. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm off though. Off you're off. really tall. I mean, you're. I know. you're <laughs> oh, are you gonna come with? Out out. So I'm. A, I'm. Yeah, a, well, I'm gonna yeah. put her in.
Drew. Ready, Freddy, Nancy Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to stay in Hey, Brock. Oh, hey, it's Dean. Well, looks like it's up to me and you to solve the mystery of the Weradile. Everyone else has dumb girls on the brain. All right, you big Nebraskan oak. Don't make me regret this. You too, Brock? You too? Uh, the both of you's got jungle fever. The both of you's. Screw this. Moot's totally blown. <laughs> Hank, yeah. find some dynamite in a big cargo net and meet me behind the camp in ten minutes. Ten! Wait. Have it! No buts! Do it! The mystery is afoot! Ah, ah. Shh! It's me! Why are you walking through the jungle backwards? I, I, I don't know. Look, I'd love to chat, but I really can't because I go! Oh. Shh! It's me! I solved the mystery of the Weradile. You have? Well, who? Not here. Come back to our hut. I'll show you everything. Well, Hank. I just found my cure for impotence after all. Now, if I could just find a way to bottle that ass, I'd be a multi-millionaire.
You look kind of down, Ash. Huh? Have a donut. That always cheers me up. Pika pika! These donuts are great. Jelly filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly filled donut. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at traditional Japanese jelly-filled donuts. They are called onigiri, and per Brock's specifications, the best ones are filled with jelly. So we're going to start off by making our donut dough. We've done this on basics before, but just as a recap, we're combining 350 grams of all-purpose flour, 75 grams of sugar, and a teaspoon of kosher salt in the bowl of a stand mixer. Give it a nice tiny whiskin, and then we're going to bloom our yeast in one cup of whole milk heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or thereabouts. So that's one packet of active yeast and about a tablespoon of sugar. Give it a little mix and let it sit for 10 minutes. During this time you can because we need time to make marzipan in the fridge one hour to be precise. Easily cut triangles since the donuts that Brock was eating were clearly triangular but they had sort of rounded edges quite unlike any donut I've ever seen so I'm going to trim off the edges and round them out. Before two cups of powdered before dropping into our glaze and then into what looked like to me some desiccated coconut. I'm definitely not a Japanese donut expert. All it needs now is those green strips of marzipan and ours is fresh out the fridge. Whoops. Ours is fresh out the fridge and all we need to do now is roll it out onto a powdered sugar dust the thin layer of our glaze to act as a sort of glue to hold the marzipan onto the donut. And there you have it. It's always really exciting to master another culture's cuisine. And I think I did that here today. Happy April Fools. 